Hello, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. In this video, I'm going to show how to make a simple Doppler effect in Reactor. In case uh, you're not familiar with the Doppler effect, the most famous example is the sound that an ambulance makes when it drives by, and it sounds a little something like this. Um, and so you can hear in that example a sudden drop in pitch um, at the moment when the ambulance stops moving towards the listener and starts moving away. Um, and so that's the effect that I'm going to try to create today. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is create a new macro to hold our work in. And this macro is going to have three inputs. Uh, we're going to take the left and right audio inputs, and there's going to be a third input that I'm going to label D for distance. And that's going to be the distance in meters between the sound source and the uh, listener. So we're going to translate um, the distance in meters to um, a time in milliseconds that it takes for the sound to move from the source to the listener. So to start it with, we're going to um, divide the distance by 345. And the reason for that is um, sound travels 345 meters per second. So when we divide uh, the distance we are in meters uh, by the distance that sound travels in one second, we get the time in seconds uh, that it will take for the sound to travel from its source to the listener. And then we're going to multiply that value by 1000, and that is going to give us a delay time um, that we can feed a single delay module with. So that's how we calculate uh, the time in milliseconds that it takes for a sound to reach the listener. So we're going to delay the incoming sound by that time and uh, duplicate the structure for both left and right channels. And so when we modulate the, the distance d, um, we're going to ch end up changing the delay time as well, and that is the effect that creates the uh, ambulance having a higher pitch while it's driving towards you than it does when it's driving away from you, is the changing time of the delay line. <clears throat> there is one thing that is left out of this module so far. Uh, we have not attenuated the signal depending on its distance, uh, by that I mean that the farther away something is, the, the quieter it should be. Um, so this is a really simple calculation. We can just take the reciprocal of D and multiply it by the output of the delay lines. And we'll have a, a very simple basic model for uh, the attenuation of sound over distance. And again, we're going to duplicate that for both left and right channels. There is one simple problem with this design, and that is if the distance is less than one meter, then we're left with uh, a reciprocal that's greater than one, and we end up multiplying by a potentially very large value. Um, um, causing the amplitude to increase greatly. So I'm going to clip the distance so that it's never less than one uh, using a simple audio clipper here. Um, so we're going to create a minimum value of one and then um, we're also going to need a maximum that's larger than that or the clipper won't work properly. So I'm just going to set it to something ridiculous like uh, 100,000 which is equal to 100 kilometers away. I don't think you're ever going to need to simulate something more than that. Um, and then, so we're going to run the output of the clipper um, into the uh, math modules that have been using the distance. 
like so. Okay, so now I'm just going to take a moment to rearrange everything. We're pretty much done with this macro. And I just like to leave everything as neat as possible with as many horizontal lines as I can make happen. Just uh, helps me read everything later on if I have to come back to a structure. Okay. So now let's uh, go to the instrument view and hook everything up here. Give us our inputs and outputs. And we're going to get rid of the voice combiners because this is an effect. It's going to be monophonic. And we're going to have to select the macro and mark that as mono as well. And I'm going to rename it to something a little more descriptive like Doppler. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do now is to provide a signal to the D input. I'm going to use a triangle oscillator and we're going to use a logarithmic module to translate a very small frequency into a pitch. Uh, I'm going to mark this at 0.01 um, so the triangle will repeat every 100 seconds and I'm going to give it um, a larger amplitude um, so if we have an amplitude of say 150 um, the triangle oscillator will modulate between uh, negative 150 and positive 150. So I'm going to use a rectifier to um, keep it within the 0 to 150 range. And then of course the clipper on the inside of the macro will clip that further to be uh, between 1 and 150 meters away. And this is just going to uh, oscillate back and forth. It's not anything I would use in a finished project, but um, just so I can give you an example of what the Doppler sounds like. Um, and I'm just going to use this numeric uh, value here to display the distance in meters we are so we can see um, what's happening as we listen to it. Okay, so I'm just going to rearrange the panel real quick and then we can listen to an example. Um, it's basically just a drum loop that I'm playing back here, and it's kind of going to get closer to us and then basically drive past us. Okay, so you can hear, uh, just like the ambulance sample that I played earlier, as soon as the drum set uh, drives past us, if you will, uh, you can hear an immediate drop in pitch. So that's the Doppler effect. Uh, if you wanted to expand upon this concept, I think the first place to start would be to create a better controller for the D input um, something where the user could uh, select a distance to start from and a distance to travel and uh, a time to travel in something like that but I'm out of time for today so if you guys are interested I can do that in another tutorial maybe alright this is Salamander Anagram signing off hope you guys enjoyed it